spring is in the air, the sun is shining and the sea is pretty calm. And today we're aboard the new Azimut 53 Flybridge Family Cruiser. So hold on to your hats, here we go. The Azimut 53 is powered by twin Volvo Penta IPS 950 drive for a top speed of 31 knots, although she's done faster, and a cruising speed of anything up to 27 knots. With 2,400 litres of fuel in the tank, she has a cruising range of around 265 nautical miles at 26 knots. We've talked a lot about the benefits of the forward-facing IPS drives on the boat show. More speed, better manoeuvrability, less noise and vibration, and better fuel efficiency. And of course, there's also the famous joystick control. In automatic pilot, for example, if you want to change course, all you need to do is tap it in one direction or the other. For more precise course correction, you twist it, twist and release, for one degree of deviation, twist and hold for 10 degrees. Easy. Azimut's technical team have come up with a hull shape that's smooth and stable in the water. Turning into the curves, she comes to rest on the hard chine and feels calm and composed. I've always liked the way azimut hulls behave, but this one is particularly pleasurable to drive. Not the fastest by any means, but she's certainly very well behaved. Not to mention the active trim control, which automatically adjusts the trim to optimize the balance and fuel efficiency at any given speed. And last but not least, the azimut 53 is fitted with a Seakeeper 9 gyro stabilizer for motion control both underway and at anchor. Speaking of which, let's find a place to park this boat so we can have a look around. The flybridge can sometimes seem like a bit of an add-on on yachts of this size, but not this one. It's spacious, it's comfortable, it's practical. The big sun pad forward is protected by the raked windscreen and partially wraps around the helm position so that an owner-captain is always in contact with the rest of the company. Opposite the driving position, we have this teak top bar and barbecue unit serving the dining table aft, which can be raised and lowered at the touch of a button. But it can also be shifted laterally, so you can tuck your knees underneath for a more comfortable dining experience. There are two shading solutions, a bimini top, which can be kept in place underway at moderate speeds and has integrated LED lighting for dining after dark, or there's the option of a fiberglass hard top on request. And if we peek over the windscreen, on the foredeck there's another big sun pad, big enough for three adults and a forward-facing bench seat. Note also the squared off bow, a signature azimut feature which increases the available space and the whole area can be covered by an awning supported by carbon fibre poles. The clean cut exterior lines are by Alberto Mancini who continues to work with azimut in redefining the S and Flybridge collections. The 53 certainly looks new and different on the outside. For example, there's this black band around the top of the superstructure that makes the flybridge look as if it's almost floating in mid-air. But it still retains the design DNA that makes Azimut yachts instantly recognizable. Tutto eh, nasce da uno schizzo su carta, un, un segno, un'idea, un simbolo che nonostante tutto l'iter progettuale, il processo di industrializzazione del prodotto rimane anche oggi, con la barca costruita qui in acqua, qualcosa di molto emozionante e si identifica in questa armonia, questa tensione armonica di linee tese che 
Poi abbiamo, io assieme al mio studio, al mio design, ai miei designer a Monaco, abbiamo studiato e modellato con una tecnica molto avanzata di modellazione e ci ha portato a creare una proporzione corretta e identifica immediatamente uno spirito anche automotive, no? questa è stata disegnata e modellata come se fosse una lussuosa GT del mare, ma è una barca marina, è una barca veramente unica, soprattutto in un segmento di mercato come quello dei fly sui 50 piedi, dove è molto difficile creare una proporzione bella. The main cockpit has been designed to make the most efficient use of the available space. So both the stairs to the flybridge and to the swim platform are on the starboard side, which leaves space for this long teak table and the L-shaped sofa, which partially wraps around the other side. There is storage under the sofa for fenders, mooring lines and other gear. In the corner we have this bar cabinet with sink, ice maker and uh, this is rather nice two bottle coolers to keep the spumante nice and cold. No fridge, you ask? Good question. Well, because this glass sliding door recesses completely, Azimuth thought, why not use the fridge in the galley? The tender, of course, is stowed here on the aft platform, which can be raised and lowered for ease of launch and retrieval. And here we have access to the crew cabin. Inside it's spacious and well appointed and unusually it has a window integrated into the transom for natural light. Now let's go and have a look inside. The galley looks onto the cockpit as we've seen and here we have the full-size fridge which I mentioned earlier. Of course you have the induction hobs, extractor fan, Underneath here, there's a dishwasher. On the other side, we have the oven. But what's amazing about this galley is the amount of space, the storage space. So we have a soft touch drawer just for the cutlery. More storage space on the other side above the oven. And just look at the thickness of this cabinet door, which has a spring-loaded mechanism, locking mechanism, so it doesn't rattle underway. More storage underneath the oven for the crockery. We have a wine cooler here, more storage next to it. And further forward, opposite the helm, we have a dedicated storage unit just for the glassware. I mean, I know they say you can never have enough storage on a boat, but here there's more than in my own kitchen. In the main salon, note the wide walkway between the sofa and the dining table. Plenty of room to walk back and forth without tripping over people's feet who might be sitting on the sofa. The dining table can be raised and lowered, again electrically, and there's a central leaf to extend it for dining with its own special storage slot in the galley. Again, more storage space under the sofa. And there's also the option of having fitted cushions on top of this table in the lowered position to have an extra berth in case a friend decides to stay overnight at the last minute, or to create a chaise longue for viewing the pop-up TV on the other side. The in-house interior design is based on this brushed oak wood, which is light and modern, but also warm and tactile. And it's coupled with bronze surfaces, again, with a matte finish and upholstery in ivory and off-white tones. The final effect is chic and very Italian, but also in this case, I think, with a subtle Scandinavian touch. Note also how all the furniture has rounded edges and there are no sharp corners. Of course, this is a safety feature, but it also lends the interior a more organic, natural feeling. Of course, we were driving the boat today from the flybridge, but here on main deck you have exactly the same system and the Garmin navigation electronics are completely integrated with the IPS drive in this clean, user-friendly interface, which both in terms of functionality and aesthetics, I think, looks a little bit like your smartphone. The owner suite is definitely a highlight of the Azimut 53. 
It's a midships, as you'd expect, to take advantage of the maximum beam of 4.95 meters. Plenty of room to move around the bed, even on the starboard side, which is on a slightly raised level, but the ceiling is raised as well to compensate so you don't have to crouch down to get in and out of bed. We've seen how much storage space there is aboard this boat, and even the bedside cabinets have a flip-up top with storage inside. There's plenty of storage under the bed, and there's even a walk-in wardrobe on a 53-footer. Here in the lobby, we have a compartment for a washer-dryer and a linen store above, and two-door access to the bathroom, which doubles as a day head. It's actually shared by the two guest cabins, the twin single, ideal for the kids behind me here, and the VIP cabin forward. Azimut has always been a powerful force in the market for mid-size flybridge cruisers, and that reputation is set to continue with the new Azimut 53 which comes in a relatively compact but stylish and family-friendly package. It never loses sight, however, of the family DNA that is part and parcel of the brand's heritage. Mm -hmm. 